This is New Cap News with Kelsey Bloxham. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm joined with Peter Quinlan, our meteorologist, and uh, totally different from what we saw mm -hmm. yesterday. Yes. Huge downpour this afternoon, and mm -hmm. we actually had a tornado watch in effect that we just heard was lifted. Yes, the tornado watch was lifted for the Lloydminster, Vermilion, Wainwright, and Provost regions, but there still is a tornado watch in effect for the Battlefords, Maidstone, Unity, as well as St. Wahlberg. And now this afternoon we had a system move through that gave us a good chance of seeing a funnel cloud. We have some shots of it here as it came through the Lloydminster region. We have a time lapse shot to show you with the cloud starting to roll into the border city and then uh, we're just having some technical difficulties getting it up here. We'll see it in a second but we did have the clouds starting to roll in because of a big area of low pressure that was sitting over top of us here it is here and you can see those clouds were dark and they came through and then we had the showers start to roll in and as this system started to move in we had the wind switch around to be from the northwest gusting at times up to 42 kilometers per hour was our maximum wind gust during that time you can see the rain hitting the camera there and those rain showers caused some localized flooding across the region even highway 16 was actually slowed to a stop this afternoon so, wow. yes, those conditions are headed into Saskatchewan now. So you're, if you're in that area under the tornado watch, do keep your eye to the sky. The conditions are favorable for t most likely funnel clouds. We may probably not see the tornadoes because there's not quite enough energy in the system. But if you see a funnel cloud, do head indoors. Definitely good advice there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Peter. And uh, we'll continue to watch this. Well, Cold Lake RCMP have arrested three men after an investigation into the Beaver River Trestle fire outside the city on the Iron Horse Trail. As Clayton Brown explains, help from the public sped up the investigation leading to the arrests. It was a month ago when RCMP asked for any information about the recent Trestle fire. That plea paid off as 20-year-old Matthew Walkerick, 18-year-old Devin McDonald, and 22-year-old Clifford Grant Kachich have each been charged with one count of arson. We certainly got cooperation from, from people who were there, and we also got cooperation from the public in general who was uh, giving us tips and helping us out. Those of us that are involved with the trail and uh, users of the trail, I, I think that it's, it's a relief, and um, it was nice to see that the tips came in and they were able to actually find out who did it. The blaze was started after a car was pushed into the base of the trestle and then set on fire. The investigation revealed the vehicle was not stolen. We were able to follow that back and confirm that actually one of the three accused is the registered owner of that vehicle. So that was certainly a big part of our investigation in determining why it was there and who was involved. The Iron Horse Trail organizers and RCMP are very pleased with the arrest, but it isn't all good news. The initial estimate of damage was around a million dollars, but after further investigation, Price says that number will be significantly higher. I think we're safe to say that that's going to be doubled. We're probably looking in the, in the ballpark of about $2 million to, to repair it. The three men made their first court appearance this afternoon. In Cold Lake, Clayton Brown, New Cap News. Meantime, a Bonneville man is facing 14 charges after police say he was involved in a hostage situation. It happened last night in Bonneville. The accused called 911, telling them he was stabbed and was holding two people hostage, a woman and her young daughter. The suspect also said he had a gun. Police managed to subdue the suspect after they say he approached them with a knife. He was taken to hospital for treatment before being taken into custody. And cleanup is underway after a semi near Elk Point flipped, spilling its load of oil and sand. The accident happened on Highway 646 after the driver passed a slow-moving vehicle and, and overturned when returning to his lane. The 22-year-old driver had minor injuries. The highway is now open, but cleanup is still underway. And starting this fall, SAS Power is closing its doors to walk-in customers. The company is shutting down in-person service starting November 30th in 18 communities. A spokesperson tells Newcap News their attention is shifting towards online and telephone customer service. He also went on to say that there won't be any jobs cut at any locations. The offices will continue to operate, but anyone looking for information or to pay a bill will have to do so online or over the phone. The Crown Utility says five offices will continue to provide walk-in service, including North Battleford and Saskatoon. 
The Lloyd Minster exhibition has found a new band to fill in for Winona Judd after the headliner cancelled her performance at the Chuck Wagon Cabaret. Former Canadian Country Music Award winners Doc Walker are taking her place. Doc Walker made some changes to their schedule out in Ontario to come bail us out and give us a hand here and help Winona and help us get through our Chuck Wagon Cabaret. And the change in lineup means a discount. We know we've got a different entertainer. People were expecting Winona, so we've reduced our ticket prices to $40 across the board uh, from the 50 and 60 at the door. Uh, because of the change in the short notice, we felt it necessary to reduce our ticket price. Current ticket holders can go to the exhibition office to receive a $10 discount. Full refunds are available. And the first day of the CPA Finals is underway tonight at the Lloyd X Grounds. But before all that happens, the team at Western Financial held a kickoff luncheon. Western Financial Group got on board because this is the 20th anniversary of the CPCA and we figured what a perfect way of, uh, it's an inaugural year for us. And, and like Betty said, the Outriders are the unsung heroes and we wanted to recognize that. Many of the Outriders, as well as some drivers, were out meeting fans and taking in the community support ahead of tonight's race. You know, we, last year we added a fifth day. The community rallied around it. This is the type of, of things we were hoping for. You know, now you've got more companies painting up their windows, more companies having barbecues, creating an event. It's a benefit to the local economy. It's just going to be a great day for kids and uh, our fans alike to just showcase uh, the Outriders because uh, they Unfortunately, uh, they're one of our main part of our show, but they don't always get uh, the recognition that they deserve. But the event was more than just to support the Outriders. Even though the lunch was free, donations were being accept accepted in support of the Lloydminster SPCA.